good morning or good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are logging in from. My name is Dan Kimball. I am with Applos Software. Welcome to our Applos webinar. Today we are going to be doing the in-product webinar on a feature that we um, just released uh, very recently called Check-In. So we'd like to welcome you wherever you are coming into us from, and um, it's just so glad that you could take a little time out of your busy schedules, whether you are a church leader, a nonprofit leader, or uh, just checking us out, we do welcome you. I just want to make sure before we get going that uh, you can, in fact, um, hear my voice and see my screen. So if you don't mind, please utilize the question box that um, is on the GoToWebinar screen. And just let me know that you can uh, hear and um, see uh, see my screen and hear my voice. That would be great. So just, uh, again, just if you don't mind, please, uh, please type in that question box. Just let me know that everybody... Um, can hear and see. That would be really helpful. So thank you very much. We still have a couple folks logging in uh, right now. So again, we want to uh, welcome those who are just doing that. So once again, just to want to make sure that you can both see and hear my vo hear my voice and see my screen. If you don't mind utilizing that uh, that question box, that would be great. Uh, so let me see here. Very good. Great. Okay. All right. And once again, if you are logging on with us right now, just again, we just want to kind of make sure that uh, everybody can uh, see and hear okay. So if you don't mind, just uh, please use that question box. So what we're going to do here once we get going is we will, um, first of all, we will have a recording of this webinar. So we will certainly um, make that available uh, to you. If you have registered, you cannot see me. Okay, let me do that again. You shouldn't be able to see me. You should just be able to see my screen. So I just want to make sure that you can see my Applos screen right there. Can you do that? Oh, good. I can see. Great. Thank you. All right. Patients, you'll need to, uh, I think, just follow the link there. It looks like that every, uh, you can, uh, so you're not going to be seeing me, but you'll be able to uh, see my screen right here, the Applos logo. Okay. So let's go ahead and and get going here again. <clears throat> I want to welcome you if you just logged in. Today we're going to be talking about our new feature called check-in. Um, so um, again, if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to utilize the question box, and um, I'll, I'll uh, leave plenty of time here at the end to to go over questions um, as well as um, you know any other dialogue you want to have. Once again, we are going to record this, so if you need to step away or you need a recording. Um, just let us know, and we will also send you a follow-up email as well. So with that, let's uh, let's kind of get into this. So again, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on our on our new um, feature called check-in. We're going to primarily just kind of be working in the people section. So again, if you're new to uh, Applos, just know when you log in, um, the uh, people, groups, and teams, don uh, donations, and marketing are kind of the donor management parts of Applos. Of course, fund accounting is going to be your accounting. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, working in our check-in. <clears throat> Some of you might have noticed this a few weeks ago. We kind of might have woken up one morning and suddenly you saw this. We also changed the name of this. It used to be called Custom Fields. It's now called Contact Configuration. And then this will become important as part of the check-in feature. I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, because <clears throat> there are some additional um, usage, for example, we, we, as you know, if you use our accounting product, um, we have a thing called tags, which is an accounting term, but we also now have a tags for people as well. The, 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 um, the fund accounting tags and the people tags, though it's the same name, they don't really tie together, um, but it's just a way to additionally um, tag your people to make check-in work. And, and, and this will all come together here, here in a minute. Um, and again, once again, if you um, are just logging in, we do want to welcome you and just feel free to um, ask questions at any time. Uh, but in order to really get check in to, to work well and get going, I do want to kind of um, do a quick review on the contact list and households because these are going to become important. So there's going to be two scenarios in check in that we're going to go over today. The first is going to be kind of the, the heart of this program, which is what we call kids check in. Um, this uh, this feature was really built for some of our uh, our churches and nonprofit partners who were asking uh, to have the ability to to check in kids 
Um, and then the second is how a nonprofit can use a check-in for more of a generic situation like a dinner party or something like that. I also want to kind of make sure people understand that our events feature, which is in donation events, that's where you, many of you know you can um, set up an event, you can um, have people purchase tickets or RSVPs to event. That module is very separate to this. In other words, uh, though you can uh, utilize the events for for um, selling tickets, this feature is um, not connected yet, but that is um, possibly going to come down the road. So with that, I just kind of want to show you uh, in the check-in feature. So you're going to go to people, you're going to check in. This is where you're going to, in a sense, set up an event uh, to check people in at. Um, but before I do that, I just want to, again, emphasize in order to make Aplos work successfully, and this is going to be true not only with um, this area, but also if you utilize our groups and teams, which is right up here, um, you'll know that you've got to get people in your contact list first. So the most critical thing in using Aplos is you need to make sure you get, you get people in the system. So we're going to go to contact list. Um, and again, just again, to make sure that um, you got your people in there. And then if you are going to be doing a, a situation where you need to check in kids, um, this is going to be a situation like a Sunday school or if you're like a youth program where you have different classrooms and you want to print name tags and check people in, you're going you're gonna to have to utilize households. If you're fam not familiar with households, we built households with the idea that you can um, build households within your contact list. So, so as an example, in my contact list, I'm going to use my last name as Kimball, um, and I'm going to go here. These are all the members in my family, and I've created a household with my last name. And But each one of these are in my contact list individually. So this is going to become very critical that, one, you get everybody in the contact list first. Secondly, you build a household if you are going to use the kids' check-in. If you're just going to use check-in to do like a dinner or something like that, you don't have to use households. Um, so if you need a little more information about households, please reach out to us. We have um, we have a webinar on households. We have some additional resources in our support center uh, and all of that. So we want to, um, so if you're not familiar with that, but again, just to kind of make my point, we want to utilize your contact list and households in order to do check-in. So let's talk about check-in a little bit. Um, the very first thing we want to do is we're going to go right here. Again, the scenarios that check-in is going to be most commonly used for is going to be something like um, if you're a church, maybe you have uh, weekly Sunday school classes, um, or if you're a, maybe you're a youth organization, um, uh, like a recreation program or athletic program, and you have um, kids coming to your, to your nonprofit, uh, and you need to check them into various locations, you can do that. Or a straight uh, uh, situation where you have a one-time event and you want to maybe check people in and keep attendance as they're as they're checking in. Um, so that's kind of how it's built right now. The very first thing you want to do is you actually want to actually create an event. Again, emphasize this is different than an event up here in the donations events area. Okay, so I just want to make sure we we understand. Even though we're using utilizing events here, the same name, it is a different feature. Okay. So once again, we're in people, we're in check-in. Very first thing you want to do is create what it is you want people to check in at. Um, I've created some here, but I'm just going to kind of show you the template. Uh, the other thing I just want to make sure you know, if you if you do start playing around with this and you want to test it, it's really important that if you create an event, um, that the check the start time and the, uh, and the check-in time is the day, is like today's day if you want to play around with it. Otherwise, it'll launch on the day of the event. So in other words, if my event is on Sunday, I can't start checking in until the date I um, until that day, okay? So you can see right here where you're gonna give it a name such as, um, uh, you know, kids program or, or a Sunday school or something like that. We're gonna go right here. We're gonna say kids. Now right here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna um, uh, pick a location. So what you can do in your contact configuration right here um, you can actually add location. So we're going to go right here um, to contact configuration. Okay. Whoops. So sorry about that. Not contact configuration. We're going to go right here, up here, and we're going to go to actions, and we're going to manage locations. Okay. And what you can do is you can start to build in locations. And by the way, these locations do, in fact, are ones if you built these in the in the uh, event, the other event module. The location should show up here, uh, but as you can see here, you're going to want to 
um, create a location with an address so that it pops up there. So again, we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to go back here to check in. And um, let's create that event again. Again, we're going to say um, Saturday sports program like that. Um, we're going to do uh, the Apple's office will be the location. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to put today's date. Um, you can actually make this repeat. So if you're a weekly or a monthly program, you can actually set this up so it repeats and you don't have to reset it up. Uh, so this, again, would be great if it's a weekly program um, or if it's a, um, a Sunday school or something like that. So, again, we're going to say today's date. The start time of, of, the, um, um, of the program is going to be, say, 11 o'clock a.m. Whoops. Okay, in time, we're going to call it to maybe one or something like that. Okay, the check-in available start time, this is as early as people could start checking in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say 9 o'clock a.m. just to make sure it, it works. Um, and we'll say that they can check in all the way up to, say, 11 o'clock or something like that. Okay, we're going to go a.m. on that. Okay, so that's important. Um, and then you have the option to, you can stop check-ins once capacity is reached because you can create capacity for your classrooms. You go here, and then you can also allow people to bring a guest and check in a guest, okay? The next thing on this before you um, before you save it is you can actually create some rooms. So this is going to be a situation where if you have, say, a Saturday Kids sports program and you have different rooms within your building. So the location is, is right here, um, the Apple's office as an example, but I might have different rooms. So I'm going to go right here. And you can give rooms a, a name as well as a room number. So, for example, this room could be um, this could be the um, you know the volleyball kids or something like that. And then you give it a, a, a preset uh, selected room. Or you could also do things like K through three or something like that. So we're going to just call it the Barker room. We're going to allow them to print labels, and we're also going to allow the parents to do labels as well. You can also do additional tags, so you could do things like names of groups, a room number with an additional tag. Um, you can, um, um, you know, do subset of rooms, those kinds of things. So there's a lot of kind of uh, dimensions or layers that you can start to build here. But just for kind of a basic to get things set up, we're just going to kind of leave it. Uh, here like that and then we're going to go um, going to go ahead and add that we're going to add this room we're going to save it so now I now have um, that Saturday sports program saved right here okay the other thing you're going to want to do right here we're going to go to actions is you want to do some configuration things right here the first thing you want to do is if you are doing a kids environment where you're checking kids in you can actually configure the name tag uh, right here. So what you can do within Applos is you can um, configure uh, the the um, what you want on that name tag, such as uh, we have an allergies field, a medical issue, a note, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And where those come from is right here in what used to be cu custom fields is in the contact configuration. And by the way, these are ones that we are suggesting. You can certainly add your own based off of the work that you do as a nonprofit or church or ministry. So you're just going to go right here to contact configuration, and you can add additional fields right here, um, the same way you do in um, custom fields within your organization. And you can see right here, here's my allergies um, and other things that I've wanted to add. Okay, so let's go back to check in. And again, what we were talking about here is configuration. We talked about locations. But you can, from here, you can um, configure how you want this label. So I'm going to go right here. And then, of course, I can, um, you know, I can change how what I want uh, here as well. Okay. So we'll just keep those right there just to kind of keep things uh, rolling here. Okay. And so once that's done, we're going to go back to check in. Um, so now that your labels are configured, your locations, all of that, you've created a location. Um, and once your event is set, then simply what you're going to do is you're going to then launch your check-in module. Okay. And so the way it works is you're going to go launch check-in. The, the um, software is going to ask you to, to um, it's going to autofill your appless login and password. So I'm going to log in right here. And there's two ways you can do check-in. The first way, the most common way is going to be what we call self-service. This would be a situation where you set up a computer or a laptop and 
people can come and they can check in themselves. So we're going to go right here. We're going to go Applos Office. These are the two events that I have set up on the Applos Office. Okay. Then I'm going to um, select a printer. These are the two kinds of printers that um, are available for check-in if you're going to print labels. If you don't care about labels and you just want people to check in, you just select no printer. We're going to do them name badge style. This is how they'll look when they print out. And then uh, we're just going to hit start. Now what's going to happen is this will be driven by a phone number. So let's say the scenario is, is that I'm a parent and I'm checking in my, my child to the sports program. I'm going to stick in a phone number, which would be my, my phone number of my family. I'm going to hit search. I'm going to hit Saturday sports program. And there's my member households we talked about. So that I just simply need to do is I need to check in each one of my kids. Now, because I only had volleyball set up, that's only the thing that's going to show up. Had I selected another room for like um, badminton or something like that, that would show up. Okay. And I'm simply going to check them in. There's my labels. Okay. And uh, ready to go. So as you can see, we have a label. This is what this, why this is double label. Is this is a label for one child. This is a label for another child. This is a parent label that's going to give a unique identifier. So it's from a confidentiality standpoint. So from here, you can either print that label or you can go right back into check in. OK, um, so we're going to go again. Uh, let's uh, let's go. Eight, eight, eight. This is the support line right here, but I have some people. So, again, you have some other people that are associated with that phone number. Um, so it's pretty simple, uh, pretty easy to use. and uh, and quite practical as well. Uh, the other thing that uh, I want to mention is that once you check people in, we're going to go ahead and click out of that. What you can do from the check-in tab is you can actually do an attendance report. So you can show who's checked in right here, and you can export that report um, for whatever uh, reason you like to um, do. Okay, so that's, um, that's a great scenario or a, a great situation um, as well. Uh, so let's just look at a couple other examples. So you can see here, I just wanted to show you, uh, like here's a Sunday school uh, program that I had set up. I set it up for weekly. Again, it's all set up, ready to go. Um, again, it's at the, um, uh, I made up this church right here, Church of the Good People. And you see here, I have different rooms, okay? So again, I gave it a class name, rooms four through six, K through three, but then I gave them room numbers. So now let's go back to um, the kiosk. Going to log in again. We're going to do this as self service one more time. We're going to do this. We're going to um, we're going to do the labels again, just so you can again see how they look. All right, we're going to hit start once again. We're going to do a phone number. We're going to do. Um, oops. Actually, I wanted to do another one from there. Sorry about that. I think this one is ready to go. People, sorry about that. Go back to check in. Going to launch my kiosk. We're going to go Church of the Good People. We're going to go which events? Oh, I have to uh, reselect that event. Um, let's let's go back to uh, my event page and show you the other scenario, and then we can talk about the, the Sunday School module here in a minute. Uh, the other scenario that I do want to mention is you could do this for just like a one-time event, like a dinner party or a banquet or something like that. I do want to mention, though, but because we had to – the way this was built for kids, you do need to assign it a room. Um, and, a, and what we call a class name. So let's say that you rented a building. It's kind of obvious that it's in a building, but you still need to give that building a class name, okay? So this would be a situation where you create a check-in environment um, and you can check people in at the door. So let me show you how this works. I've created a dinner party. I've given it a location. I've given it a start time and an end time and a check-in time. Again, today's date so I can show you how it works. Um, we've saved it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the kiosk once again. And then this time, instead of self-service, I'm going to do it as staff. So in this scenario, people walk up, 
they give your name. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can do the name uh, tag situation or people can walk up to a table. You can have it staff. We're going to again do Apple's office. We're going to do the dinner party this time. We're not going to do labels. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start it. Now in this scenario, this is going to be done by by name. So anybody that's that's either registered for the event or signed up or in your contact list. So again, we're going to go, let's pick um, Alex Acre right here. Uh, we're going to call it dinner party. And there's everybody that's in the Acre family right here. So I can just simply go here. Again, I didn't um, select a room because this is a kind of a one room thing. I'm going to check in all of these folks. I'm going to check them in. Um, and uh, we're going to go from there. So all of those, those folks have been checked in. And then from there, you can do a, um, a report. And you would just keep going go until you're done. This does open up a second window. So you just simply close it. Now we'll go back to that uh, dinner party. And um, I'm going to go attendance report. And there's the folks I just checked in. So um, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Like I said, the only kind of wonky thing for a one-time event is you do have to kind of create a room and all of that. Um, so. I do want to uh, just kind of pause here. So how much is this program to add on? Well, Crystal, that is an excellent question. Um, and there is no cost at all. It is there. <laughs> so one of the things about Applos is that this is a feature that is available to you as of now. Um, there's nothing you have to turn on or or um, or, or it's, it's there ready for you to go. So that is part of your subscription um as well will children's workers have access to other people's giving records no there's, there's absolutely no uh way that they can log in um so in other words um when you launch the kiosk uh they would um they would not have access to your financial information um can you also check in but mass list of members um, so Sharon, what you would do for a mass list of members is that as long as they're in the contact list and you created an event and um, as long as they're in your, their contact list, they'll show up in whatever event you created. So let's say that you have a list of members. Um, you can um, you would just create that event and then put them in by last name. You're very welcome, Crystal. Um, by a mass list of members. So again, I'm I'm hoping Sharon, I answered that correctly, or or what uh, what you were looking for. Um, again, your members are going to live here in your contact list, and you can check them in. Um, <clears throat> would the check-in feature work for daily volunteer check-in? I think so. Again, if you're just looking for an attendance report, um, or if you're looking for name tags, you could you'd certainly do that. You would just um, the only thing about daily, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, is that I don't think we give you that that option uh, in the setup. So if that's something that you need, if you could let me know, reach out to me. Let's go to check-in real quick. You would have to actually um, create an event to go happen daily, wouldn't you? Let's go create event. Let's go repeats. Yeah, so every week. Um, yeah, I'll need to come back to you on that one, uh, Emily, um, about daily or something we can see if we can add. Um, you're welcome, Sharon. Um, so that's that's really check-in in a nutshell. This is not a horribly long webinar because there's not – I mean, we just kind of want to show you the functionality of it. Um, but at this point, I'm going to ask if you have any other questions. Um, I would say that, you know, for a nonprofit, this is going to be great if you're running – a program with uh, where you need to assign people rooms, things like that, um, and then uh, again for churches and and youth programs and for um, one-time events, this is also going to be good. Um, Sharon, your question is: If using the contact list to check in, does it allow uh, us to check in by family member as well? So, if I'm understanding your question, Sharon, the answer is yes. Um, what you would do? Oh, I I see. Does it allow you to check in by family as well? So I see what you're asking. So if they're created in a household, um, you want to, instead of checking in each individual, you would want to check in the entire household. Is that correct? Let me know, Sharon. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. I think that's currently not available, but I wonder if that's something that we can uh, add on to. One thing I do want to mention about you know this feature, because it is brand new, we do have a lot of opportunity and ability right now to kind of tweak it a little bit as we go. And, and so this is why we do these webinars. We release it. 
We let people kind of work in it and then give us feedback. So let me just check real quick, Sharon, before I before I say absolutely not. Um, what we're going to do, let's go to check-in real quick. And let's just go ahead and launch, uh, launch that check-in uh, one more time. And we'll log in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to, um, in this case, we're going to do staffed. And we're going to go Apple's office. We're going to pick my dinner party. Uh, and then we're going to do no printer. And we're going to hit start. And we're going to go, this is a, yeah, that's, a, that's not available to, to entire. But I'm going to add that as a feature request um, and see what we can do with that. That's a great idea, actually. Okay. All right. Any other questions coming through? Perfect. All right. So, uh, David, missed the first three minutes. What's the address or how do you launch the check-in um, site separate from Applos? Um, so, David, what I'm assuming you mean is that um, is that if you have volunteers that need to get in uh, and um, without getting into your Applos account, is that correct, David? What you're wanting to do? Yeah, what we'll have to do is we'll have to set up a user role. Um, David, let me, I'm going to reach back out to you uh, individually on that process, um, if that's okay, because um, there's a couple things on that I, I want to go. But what we'll have to do is create some user roles. Um, it's going to be your Applos account, but you're going to have to create uh, user roles for those, uh, those folk, folks. But David, I have your email here, and I'd like to come back to you on that, okay? Um, so let me see any other questions. Yeah. So once again, yeah. Thank you, David. Um, so once again, this is uh, this is part of your Apple subscription. There's there's really no extra cost. Anything other no other thing. You know, I just say is just you know play around with it. Give it a little test drive. Reach out to me. Um, I again just want to kind of remind folks that um, we do have um, live phone support from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. We're on Pacific Daylight Time. Please feel free to call this number right up here. Um, we also have, if you go to the, um, again, if you didn't see that, you click the little question bar, box right here, go to Support Center, you click right here. You can also uh, type in the word check-in, and there are um, uh, some overview articles of what I just went over, how the labels work, how the kiosk works, how to, how to do printers, um, and all the things I just went over is going to be right there. Uh, but certainly feel free to give us a call as well. If you did, uh, since you registered for this, we will have a recording av available and we will send that out to you by email as well. Okay. So unless there's any other questions, I um, want to just again say thank you for spending some time uh, with that. Uh, is this compatible with the tablet? Yes, absolutely. We've tested this on tablet, iPhones, all of that. In fact, all of Applos is is tablet, um, tablet and mobile friendly. So yes, you can absolutely use it on a tablet okay the one thing i just want to emphasize is you do need to um, people sometimes uh, don't realize you do you are going to need to invest in a printer um, if you do um, uh, if you um, are going to use the label feature and we and we showed you the two printers um, that they're available with okay great you're welcome okay everybody well thank you once again again let me just leave you with my email address my email is dan.kimball it's spelled d-a-n dot k i m b a l l at applos com. If there's anything uh, you want to follow up with me on, uh, David, I am going to follow up with you uh, privately, individually about your question, and then um, and I'll send you a resource as well. Okay. So once again, I want to thank you all for um, attending Applos webinar, and we'll look forward to uh, talking to you or seeing you again. Thanks.